Welcome! Let's look at adding and subtracting whole numbers and decimals. And we'll do so by way of a word problem. Here, Pablo goes to the grocery store to buy some ingredients to make a spaghetti dinner. He buys a package of pasta for $1.09, a jar of sauce for $2.67, some mushrooms for $3.27, zucchini on special for a dollar, and a bay leaf for nine cents. If he pays with a $20 bill, how much change will he get back? Okay, let's look at the steps to solve this problem. The first thing to do would be to add up the cost of all the ingredients. So let's list them. We have $1.09 for the pasta package, $2.67 for the jar of sauce, And the key here is that we're lining up the decimals so that they're in the same column. Next we have the mushrooms for $3.27. Again, lining up the decimal. And the zucchini is a dollar. Now there is no cents with the dollar, so we assume that the decimal's right after the dollar place value, and then we can just add a couple of zeros to represent the cents. Now the bay leaf is given in cents. We want to put it into dollars. So we write that as decimal zero nine, making sure that the nine cents, which is the hundredths column, lines up. We can also put a zero in front of the decimal so that the ones column has a digit in it, like the rest of the numbers. Now we can simply add up all the columns, starting at the far right, which is the hundredths column. 9 plus 7 plus 7 plus 0 plus 9 is 32. So we write a 2 in the hundredths column and carry the 3 to the tenths column. 3 plus 6 plus 2 is 11. So we write a 1 in the tenths column and carry a 1 to the ones column. And again, just double checking that the decimal column lines up to separate the cents and the dollars. Finally, we add up the ones column. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 1 is 8. So the total cost of all the ingredients is $8.12. Now we're paying with a $20 bill. So to find out how much change we're going to get back, the next step is to subtract the total cost of the ingredients from 20. The 20 is a whole amount. In that case, the decimal is right after the zero. So we can turn it into a dollar and cents amount by simply adding two zeros after the decimal. Now let's bring over the $8.12 and subtract it from the $20. And again, we want to make sure that the decimals are aligned in the same column. And then we can start the subtraction. The problem is we can't take 2 from 0, so we have to start to borrow from the next column over. In fact, we have to go all the way over to the tens column. So we borrow 1 there, that makes the ones column turn into 10, then we borrow 1 from that to make the tenths column become 10, and borrow 1 from that to make the hundredths column become 10, and now we can subtract. So 10 minus 2 is 8, 9 minus 1 is 8. We're just subtracting the columns. Decimals line up, so the decimal stays. 9 minus 8 is 1. And that 2 became a 1 when we borrowed 10. So 1 minus 0, because there's not, no digit there, becomes a 1. And so our change is $11.88. Now the last thing to do is to check to make sure we've got a reasonable answer. So what we can do is we can add the $8.12 and the change, the $11.88, and it should add up to our $20. So let's go ahead and do that. $11.88 plus $8.12, making sure the decimals line up. 8 plus 2 is 10, carry the 1. 8 plus 1 plus 1 is 10, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 8 is 10, carry the 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, 
we end up with our $20. So we're pretty confident that our answer of $11.88 in change is the correct amount. And there you go. Thanks for watching.